Sam, thank you again for being here backstage. Sam said this was the most fun thing he'd be doing all week, so I hope you don't. I said this is the mind. only fun moment. The of my only whole New York fun. Trip this is great. Um, we we'll have a lot of questions for you. Uh, all right. Appreciate uh, your time. The first one, I think, uh, on the minds of many people in the room tonight. Uh, what the hell happened? <laughs> um. <laughs> it's a good opener. Thank you. A lot of things. It, it, it's it, honestly, it's been a crazy whole year. Like in the context of everything that has happened to us this last three weeks or month or whatever it's been, it stands out, but not as much as you would think it should. We we kind of like went from this unknown research lab to this like reasonably well-known tech company in a year, and I think that takes most companies like ten years. And that's been a wild experience to live through. Um, of course, these last few weeks have been particularly crazy, uh, and sort of like painful and exhausting and happy to like be back to work. Um, to say something like empathetic, uh, I think everybody involved in this, as we get closer and closer to super intelligence, um, everybody involved gets more stressed and more anxious and we realize the stakes are higher and higher. And I think that all exploded. How do you think this moment has changed OpenAI? Um, it's been extremely painful for me personally, but I actually think it's been great for OpenAI. Um, we've never been more unified. Uh, we have never been more sort of determined and focused. And we always said that some moment like this would come between where we were in, in, in building AGI. I didn't think it was going to come so soon, but I think we are stronger for having gone through it. Uh, again, I like wouldn't wish it on an enemy, but it, it did it did have an extremely positive effect on the company. And um, what did you learn from it? Um, I haven't like fully recompiled reality yet. It, like I didn't, I haven't had the time to like emotionally process all of this because it was like, it all happened so fast and then I had to like come back in and pick up the pieces um, that I haven't had time to like sit down and really reflect as much as I would like. But I, I would say, the most important thing that I learned, um, you know, a, a thing I had always heard as like a cliche or whatever, is that your job as a CEO is how much, like the people you hire and how much you sort of develop and mentor your team. And the proudest moment for me in all of this craziness was realizing that the executive team could totally run the company without me. I can go retire, open I will be fine. And I'm super proud of the people to do that and to watch them work at a time where I couldn't really talk to them. Um, but they did an amazing job. Really made me very proud. And it also made me very optimistic because I think as we do get closer to artificial general intelligence, as the stakes increase here, um, the ability for the OpenAI team to operate in uncertainty and stressful times is, is like really that should be of interest to the world. You, you're describing how high the stakes are here. What do you say to someone who says, this company brought itself to the brink of self-destruction. How can we trust its leader and how can we trust its company with this transformative technology? Um, we have to make changes. Uh, we, we always said that we didn't want AGI to be controlled by a small set of people. We wanted it to be democratized. And we clearly got that wrong. So I think if we don't make, if we don't improve our governance structure, if we don't improve our, the way we interact with the world, people shouldn't, but we're very motivated to improve that. On those changes, um, your former uh, co-founder, Elon Musk, former person of the year, um, has described OpenAI as a closed sourced maximum profit company effectively, grows, effectively controlled by Microsoft. Uh, is Elon wrong? <laughs> On all of those topics. And any others, or do you uh, want to? And you know, I actually, in spite of his like constant attacks on OpenAI, I'm very grateful that Elon exists in the world. I think, Why? Because I think he's done some amazing things. I, I think the transition to electric vehicles is super important. Um, I think getting to space is super important. Uh, and I'm grateful for those things. 
you know, we're definitely not maximum profit seeking, although you could talk to Elon about some of his ventures for that one. Um, and we open source a lot of stuff, we'll open source more in the future, and we're certainly not controlled by Microsoft. Um, and I think all that is something that someone can say, but does not actually reflect the truth. Um, a thought on an, a question about another competitor. Google released Gemini last week, um, a model that Google claims outperforms GPT-4 on many performance tests. What do you make of Gemini, and why did it take them so long to release it? I'm happy for more people to be making AI progress. I think, I think AI will be the most, the single most transformative technology of this era. And so more people doing that I think is great. When the big Gemini model, I forget what it's called, I think Gemini Ultra, when that gets released sometime next year, we'll get to look at it. I can weigh in on it then. Um, certainly there's been a lot of confusion around the metrics, but I'm, I'm sure Google will do great work. Uh, in an interview earlier this year with Edward Felsenthal, you said, Ah, my, my predecessor is Time Editor-in-Chief. You said, I am a Midwestern Jew. I think that fully explains my mental model. Uh, yeah, I think that's I, like... I, is that true? You still feel that way? No, I think it's like a compressed one sentence to like explain everything about what I... I think that's pretty good. As a, um, as a New England Jew, I have to ask you, um, how does Judaism shape your worldview, and what has it been like to have been a Jewish leader since October 7th? You know, if you had asked me this question at the beginning of the year, um, I would have said there's all of these like subtle but important cultural things that have, I think, shaped my worldview and how I act and how I sort of live my life. And I wouldn't have talked about anything other than that. And one of the, one of the weird things about being Jewish and getting internet famous is like most of your online experience is people saying like horrible things about Jews. And I don't know if that was always the case or if that's like ramped up, but that's certainly been my experience this year and on double time since, uh, since the last couple of months. Um, I think I was just like wrong to be so dismissive of this. I was like, look, anti-Semitism, we're done with that. The world has moved on. There's other problems, let's talk about those. And I have really seen in this, this last year and particularly in this last couple of months that I was just completely wrong about that. And it's like a sad, sad thing for the world. You're someone who likes to take on intractable problems as you've thought about that. You know, how do you think about solutions towards that? That one seems harder than AGI. Uh, speaking of difficult problems, uh, next year is a historic year for democracy. There will be elections in 40 countries. Um, are you concerned at all about AI's ability to contribute to disinformation? And are, do, you have, do you think there are specific concerns that we're not concerns that you think we're not taking seriously enough? Yeah, so I think AGI will be the most powerful technology humanity has yet invented. And like any other previous powerful technology, that will lead to incredible new things. I think we'll see education change deeply and improved forever. I think the kids that start kindergarten today, by the time they graduate 12th grade, will be smarter and better prepared than the best kids of today. I think that's great. I think we talk about the same thing in a lot of other things. Healthcare, people who program for a living, a lot of other knowledge work. But there are gonna be real downsides. And one of those, I mean, there'll be many that we'll have to mitigate, but one of those is gonna be around um, the persuasive ability of these models and the ability for them to affect elections next year. And I think we're gonna really confront something quite challenging. So what's that gonna look like? You could, have, so, so right now, um, it's like troll farms in whatever foreign country who are trying to interfere with our elections. They make one great meme, and that spreads out, and all of us see the same thing on Twitter or Facebook or whatever. That'll continue to happen and that'll get better, but a thing that I'm more concerned about is what happens if an AI reads everything you've ever written online, all, every article, every tweet, every everything, and then right at the exact moment sends you one message customized for you that really changes the way you think about the world. Um, that's like a new kind of interference that just wasn't possible before AI. I find in most conversations with you, people are processing their fears, so if you'll allow me, um, is, is AI good or bad for media? 
one thing I always say is no one knows what happens next. I think the way technology goes, predictions are often wrong. The future is like subtle and nuanced and dependent on many branching probabilities. Uh, so the honest answer is I don't know. But I think it's gonna be more good than bad. It will be bad in all sorts of ways. But I think it nets out to something good. As people have more free time, um, more attention, and also care more about the people they trust to help them make sense of the world, to help them decide what to trust and how to think about a complicated issue. I, I think they're gonna rely and care more about their relationship with someone in the media more and more and care more about high quality information in a world of like massive amounts of generated content. So I think it should be net good, but it will be different. How do you think about your company's role and your role in helping to preserve an ecosystem where high quality information remains? It's obviously super important to us, the, but that's like a sort of empty statement. Um, the kinds of things that we try to do are build tools that are helpful to people. It, if, to people in the media, people in other industries, if, if you had asked us five years ago what was gonna happen, we would have said, we will be able to build you know, trusted, responsible AI, but fundamentally, it's gonna be going off and doing its thing. And now, I think we see a path to what we do is instead build tools for people. And we put these tools out into the world, and people, media or otherwise, use them to architect the future. And that is the most optimistic thing I think we have discovered in our history. And the, the safety story changes in that world, the way that we are a responsible actor in society changes in that world. Um, I think we now see a path where we just empower everyone on Earth to do what they do more and better. Uh, and that's, that's so exciting. That's so different than how I thought AI was gonna go, but I'm so happy about it. Speaking about where AI is going to go, um, one of the challenges I think we had in, in talking about the work that you've done and that OpenAI is doing is helping people understand your vision of, of what artificial general intelligence means for our future. And so can you help this room understand how their lives will be changed? You said you can't predict the future, but as we move forward, you know, what will AGI mean for all of us? I think the two, I mean, there's many like important forces towards the future, but I think the two most important ones are artificial intelligence and energy. Um, if we can make abundant intelligence for the world, and if we can create abundant energy, then our ability to have amazing ideas for our children to like teach themselves more than ever before, for people to be more productive, to offer better healthcare, to uplift the economy, um, and to actually put those things into action with energy, I think those are two massive, massive things. Now, they come with downsides, and so it's on us to figure out how to make this safe and how to like responsibly put this in the hands of people but I think we see a path now where the world gets much more abundant and much better every year, and people have the ability to do way, way more than we can possibly imagine today. And I think we're, I think 2023 was the year we started to see that. 2024, we'll see way more of it. And by the time, like, the end of this decade rolls around, um, I think the world is going to be in an unbelievably better place. It sounds sort of like silly and sci-fi optimism to say this, but... If you think about how different the world can be, not only when every person has a, you know, today they have like ChatGPT, it's like not very good, um, but <laughs> next they have like the world's best chief of staff. And then after that, every person has like a company of 20 or 50 experts that can work super well together. And then after that, everybody has a company of 10,000 experts in every field that can work super well together. And if someone wants to go focus on curing disease, they can do that. And if someone wants to focus on making great art, they can do that. But if, if you think about you know, the cost of intelligence and the, the quality of intelligence, the cost falling, the quality increasing by a lot, and what people can do with that, it's like a very different world. It's the world that sci-fi has promised us for a long time. And, and for the first time, I think we get to start to like see what that's gonna look like. Uh, two quick questions to, to wrap up this conversation. And again, thank you for being here. Uh, Disqualify yourself from consideration, and remember there are a lot of CEOs in the room tonight. Who should be the, the 2023 CEO of the year, if not you? There are a lot of good choices for that. Um, 
I mean, I, I, I'm hugely biased on this. I do think uh, AI was sort of the most exciting, impactful thing to happen this year, so I'd give it to one of the other AI companies, but I'm, I'm like, really biased. Smooth answer. Um, <laughs> uh, a much harder question to end this conversation. Uh, what is your favorite Taylor Swift song? Uh, that is a hard question. To pick like a not super popular one, I would say Wildest Dreams. Okay. But uh, oh, you know, I like that. Non, uh, but all of the like all of the super popular ones are great too. Uh, well, Sam Altman, Times 2023 CEO of the Year. Thank you very. Thank much. you very much. Thank you.